and welcome live to Frisco, Texas, and the Bison Media Blog pregame show. We've been doing this show for six years, and we finally reached the big time. We're on WDAY TV. I'm WDAY Six Sports Director Tom Izzo, joined by my colleagues from the Forum of Fargo Morning, Jeff Kolpak and Eric Peterson. Good morning, gentlemen. We have finally reached game day. North Dakota State going for history, a fifth consecutive national championship never done before in the modern era of college football playing Jacksonville State. It's finally game day, Jeffrey. It feels like we've been talking about this one for three weeks now. <laughs> well, it has been three yeah. weeks, and it's been a lot to talk about. This, I think, is the most prolific offense the Bison mm. will face. Now, we debated, is it Sam Houston three, four years ago, or is it the Jacksonville team coming in? We or Illinois State last year, too. They had the two-headed yeah. monster. I think this is a three-headed monster. Big E, good morning to you. I know you were out celebrating with the Bison fans last night. Your thoughts on what we're going to see here later this morning? Well, it'll be interesting to see what factor weather plays in. Yeah. It's a lot colder than it's been the last two days. It's uh, drizzling a little bit, so if it rains during the game, What's it going to be like? Is it going to limit the passing if it's windy? So that, that's one thing to, to look at this morning is, is how the weather plays out. It is misting as we speak. It is a bit windy. We heard 15 to 25 mile per hour winds, which obviously could affect the kicking game, which is a huge deal, which we'll get into later in this morning's show. We'll also talk about the prediction segment, which is coming up. I don't know what my colleague to the right has planned. I'm sure he's got something great. There's a great amount of Bison fans. Also, NDSU Hall of Famer Chad Stark is going to join us later in the show. Well, with the big news yesterday, it was ripped off about 3 o'clock when Chris Kleiman announced that Carson Wentz will start in the game. Jeff, it's been 13 weeks since Wentz broke his wrist to the day, 13 weeks ago against South Dakota. First off, surprised that Kleiman let the cat out of the bag yesterday and not let us find out at 11 a.m.? Yeah, a little bit because he kept it to the vest for so long. Yeah. You thought, okay, maybe he'll just play it out till game time. But I just he, Carson was in front of the media yesterday. I just think he wanted, you know, to put it out there. He didn't want him to have to make stuff up and, you know, and not talk about what's really been happening the last two weeks. Well, I know? think you hit the nail on the head, though. How hard it was it to keep this secret for the last it, six in, weeks? Basically. In this day of social yeah. media and tweeting and, and, you know, all the all the messages, not one player, yeah. nobody talked about it. Well, the other thing is, I mean, 4 o'clock on Friday afternoon or 11 a.m. Doesn't Saturday. really matter. It doesn't matter. Jacksonville yeah. State wasn't going to change their game plan. Head coach John Gross said all week they're prepared yeah. for Carson Wentz. And I truly believe they're going to prepare for Carson Wentz. If it was Easton sick, they'd make the adjustment. So I don't think Jacksonville State was caught off guard by that announcement. How surprised are you on this and worried about a rust factor? I asked Carson Wentz that. He said, no, not at all. Or to upset the apple cart and Easton Stick got this team here and he performed great over the last eight weeks. I think the rust factor gets leveled off a little bit because everyone's taken three weeks off. Yeah. So there may be a bit of rust for everybody. Granted, three weeks isn't you know close to three months. It's going to be like an opening game for both teams. They had like three weeks, which is similar to like a fall camp yeah. to open the season. So I think there'll be a little rust and timing issues on both sides in that first quarter. And I, I think Coach Kleiman's hoping Carson Wentz shakes out the rest in that first quarter and is ready to go. Boy, what a ovation of the, it's going to be when he comes out on the field later this morning. You know, the question is, why go to Carson after Easton yeah. led your team to eight straight wins? Well, he's a fifth-year senior. He's a two-year captain. He's your NFL guy. He's been healed now for, what, two and a half weeks, as best we can tell. <laughs> he's in great shape, by the way. He's been working yeah. out. He's probably in better shape than he was if he was playing because he's been doing some individual yeah. workouts. So, I mean, I think he's ready to go. Well, Biggie and I, we got the video on Wednesday, the double secret probation when we were across the street. He was winging it around. I, I saw it with my own eyes. I'm like, there's no way he was not going to play. I wasn't sure about starting, though. Well, I think it's going to come down to when he takes that first hit. If he's thrown in the pocket, is he right. going to worry about hitting his wrist on, on a helmet? Or if he gets tackled, is there, is there going to be similarities there? But... The big thing is going to be the timing. Is he going to still have the timing with the receivers when he throws that deep 10, 15 yard out with that big arm? Is he yeah. going to be off a little bit? I think that would be the biggest concern, especially earlier in the, early yeah, in the game. Yeah, but his ball's different than Easton Sticks. I mean, he it's throws a harder hard, ball. Yes. He throws a harder ball, so now they'll have to adjust to that. And but, I guess I think from an uh, NDSU standpoint, you're thinking if NDSU can run the ball, it probably doesn't matter who's at quarterback. You're just going to hand it off and run it. If NDSU needs to go to a passing game, 
Obviously, Carson Wentz at this stage of his career is more equipped to do that. I will say this, the Bison did not run it well when Carson Wentz was quarterback in the first six games of the year. Let's discuss NDSU's opponent this morning. Jacksonville State was ranked number one a majority this year. They did not lose to an FCS opponent. Their only loss was to Auburn. You and I watched that game. It was an overtime game. I know the Tigers weren't very good in the SEC, but it's still an SEC team. You mentioned it off the top. They have a dynamic quarterback, running back combo. Eli Jenkins in the quarterback spot, first team All-American. American. Tremaine Pope, I think he looks like a lot like Shakir Bell, the great Indiana State running back from a couple years ago. I think that's a good comparison. You know, he's listed at 5'9", 205, and we saw him on Thursday. I don't think he's that. I think he's more 5'8", 190. Five, all right. That being said, Shakir Bell was about that size, <laughs> and he was running over people. So it's not so much the size, but the power. What did you see from their defensive line, which has three SEC transfers, two from Auburn, one from Tennessee? They looked the apart. They're yeah. big. I mean... Uh, Chris Landrum is kind of that speed rush defensive end, 6'3", 260. And then Devontae Sigler is a, they listed him at 6'3", 310, whatever he is. I've seen him listed at 6'5", 290. Either way, he's a big guy. And, you know, he, th these people, they saw some playing time. It wasn't like they didn't play. Landrum, the least, I think he played in one game. But Alan Carson, who def uh, transferred to Tennessee, played as a true freshman there. So yeah. there's got to be some talent there. We look forward to seeing the Gamecocks on the field. We've only seen a handful of fans not sure how many actually are going to be inside Toyota Stadium at 11 a.m. When the Media Blog pregame show continues live from Frisco, a closer look at how NDSU has become the dominant team in FCS. That's next. We're live on WDAY from Frisco. We come back right after this. Welcome back, everybody, live to Frisco, Texas. The Media Blog pregame show rolls on. NDSU Hall of Famer Chad Stark coming up around the bend. And, of course, our prediction segment as well, our final pregame show of the year. Back with Jeff Kolpak. NDSU will have a chance to make college football history this afternoon. No team has won five national championships in a row. You have to go back to the 1800s when Yale did it, the mighty Bulldogs, when they won six in a row. I ask you, the great college football mind, how in the world has this happened? No, I wasn't covering the Yale Bulldogs <laughs> back then. How does it happen? This is a power-based team, I think, playing in a division that doesn't really play a lot of power football. You know, you're talking about the spread offenses. You know, you'll see it today, although Jacksonville, more than anybody, I think, can run a little bit yeah. power but in this day and age I think NDSU's found this niche that you know that it's hard to answer and I, it's, I don't know how else to explain it other than you find athletes that are just stronger and more powerful I also think they have more depth than any other team at this level they rival Sunbelt Mountain West Mac kind of depth where we look at Easton Stick, he would be a starting quarterback at 98% of the other FCS schools. Yeah, and he had an offer at Rutgers. Yeah. And you tell yeah. people that and it just you know, blows them away. It's a Big Ten school. <laughs> it is. Uh, and you look at the depth, you know, it's recruiting. It's, it's winning those yeah. Twin Cities recruiting wars. And Nebraska has been really good to him. And let's not forget about the budget. Uh, NDSU yeah. has a big recruiting budget. Uh, you know, and it's hard to compare other FCS schools with that. But it's got to be one of the biggest budgets to recruit. Also, now, Jeff, with it, we look into the future with cost of attendance coming in. Does this widen the gap between where NDSU is and the rest of the division, knowing App State, Georgia Southern already gone, Coastal Carolina is on its way out? Yeah, there are, what, 121 schools playing FCS yeah. football. How many do you think have a chance, really, of winning a Honestly, title? Honestly, I always say six to seven to the start of the year. That might be shrinking. With, with cost of attendance, yeah. it sure might be shrinking. Is Northern Iowa going to join the cost of attendance? That's a big thing because you and I has been getting beat by NDSU in those recruiting wars, and you look down to it, I know that that might be not be the final call why a kid comes to NDSU, but it certainly can't hurt. Well, we'll find out, I think, in a couple years yeah. when that thing really gets going. But you know, of the cost of attendance, it's all who you measure up against. Right. And you're talking about recruiting. Well, you're recruiting against FBS schools. You know, the Wyomings of the world, the Mountain West, the Max. The Max. And yep. when you win some of those recruiting battles, that's how you build depth. Really interesting to see how this program goes forward. Also, it should be noted, Colpac, the guys that are juniors and redshirt freshmen playing in today's game, they're going to be back. This team is not going to be going anywhere, I, in my estimation. And I think a lot of people figure they wouldn't be in Frisco, no. you know. And, and we, we've been here, what, a, two weeks? They're here. The yeah. Cavalry is here. I mean, around Plano, Frisco. I've never seen more Bison no. fans. And, you know, it's not slowing down, that's Before for sure. Next year, Iowa, Eastern Washington on the non-conference schedule for 2016. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll go down memory lane and visit with a Bison Hall of Famer. That's next as the Media Blog pregame show continues live on WDAY. 
Welcome back, everybody, live to Frisco and the Media Blog pregame show. Still to come, our predictions. Big E and the props department have been cleaned out <laughs> since it's the last game of the season. Jeff and I now are joined by a Bison Hall of Famer. He has his own prop, Chad Stark, to reflect on this run and the glory days of Division II. First off, this is half a decade that the Bison have been in Frisco. How remarkable is that when I say that out loud? They, they have done a great job and they've done it with integrity and class. This is uh, this is a great team and it will go down in uh, the history books as one of the best ever. Well, you talk about great teams, you know, you're part of three or four great teams. What do you, what's it take? You know, what, what's the key element there? Yeah, uh, perseverance, because it's it's really not easy. You're always going to run into a hurdle one time or another. And you look look back after all these teams, you had the the Wentz or the uh, Carson or Olsen go down. You saw Higo go down, and you saw Travis uh, Beck. Beck last yeah. year, and they just found a way. Mm -hmm. You just find a way, next man up, Bison pride, and then everybody rallies around them. I mean, the offensive line and defense has played phenomenal ever since those injuries. I think I saw you after the Montana game, and I know I talked to you before the UND game. So give us the pulse of the Bison fans after the loss in Missoula. Was people ready to jump off Memorial Bridge in Fargo? What was the reaction? <laughs> well, the diehard fans certainly didn't. Yeah. You know, we we yeah. always we we know those are going to be part of the hurdles, and and we had a young defense, and and they found themselves as as they've gone. The key to Bison football is getting better each week. Mm -hmm. When's your next play? When's the next best play? It's the next play. And that's the kind of mentality that we've had from the get-go, from the it, 60s. You know, Chris Kleiman said a big key has been they've been running harder, the running backs. have been running harder since the South Dakota loss. What does that mean? You're a former running back. What do you mean by running harder? Well, I mean, the simple answer is that you just keep your, <laughs> keep your feet yeah. going, but there's a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to go down after that first hit. You want to carry three or four guys. In fact, back when I played, I ran faster when I had guys on my back than I did when I was out in the open. So that's the kind of mentality we have in the backfield. Did you see that through the first six games, just in the stands, a noticeable difference in what uh, Colpack is talking about between what King Frazier and Chase Morlock were doing, over, and especially Bruce Anderson now over the last eight weeks? Yeah, they, they've just found a way to step it up because it did, it did seem like they just weren't getting those extra yards, yeah. making guys miss miss, which you know, some teams were able to do to us later in the year. Uh, they found a way to step it up, and they and it's been a sense of pride for them. I mean, King Frazier said it a bunch of times that, you know, this is this is where we take advantage of some of these defenses. You know, you look at the fans behind us and all around us. 2013, you saw everybody coming here. In the first year, of course, everybody's going to Frisco. What about this year? I mean, no. It's, it's <laughs> you'd, packed think again. you'd think it would taper oh, down, but wow. it has it. It is crazy, and I love it. I mean, we came to practice here with with the team yesterday. We couldn't believe all the tailgate people yeah. out here already, already taken care of, and 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 this is a testament to what this team has done. I mean, they have just found a way to win, and and they're everybody's darling. I mean, when, especially when you can get ESPN to cover us yeah. like they have. What do you remember about Jacksonville State? This is going to be the third time the Gamecocks and Bison have been in the playoffs. The 1977 Grantland Rice Bowl. I don't think Cole Pack, your, your dad may have covered that, yeah, though. I'm right? sure he did, yeah. And then the game, obviously, in 1989 that was played down in Jacksonville. JSU won both times. Yeah, and, and so the 77 game is what I remember most because a lot of the uh, guys I hang out with were in that game. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the food poisoning game, yeah. and, and it was everybody was close to the bathroom, if you know what I mean. And that was when Spurl wanted to move to the shotgun. He didn't yeah. want to take snaps <laughs> underneath. So, you know, we we haven't had a lot of luck with these guys, yeah. but, you know, that's why they play the game, and we're going to have a good one out there today. So the big question, Carson Wentz yeah. or Easton Stick, oh, who would man. you go with? Oh, I, I, from the get-go, I said three weeks ago, I said if Carson's 100%, you're playing him. I mean, yeah. as a senior, you don't lose your job. And who is the, the biggest – the biggest supporter of that, Easton Stick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's been mentored by this guy for two years. He wants to see him go out on top, and I, I think it's a great story. I know I asked you this a while ago, but I'm going to ask you again. That 86 team, how would they fare against the, uh, these Division I teams? How would they stack up? We would get our butt kicked. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just they're so much bigger and faster now. I mean, when you compare in 86, did we have any issues with teams we played? No, we, we dominated for that era. Yep. Um, it, you know, you take that team and try to put it into what they're doing nowadays. I, I don't think that formula works, and you know, I don't. I don't even want to. 
try to do yeah, it but anyway. You, you dominated all the physical football, and that's what they're doing now. Right, and they've just they just stepped it up. It's another level. It's yeah. it's uh, you know each each year they've got bigger and better and faster and stronger. And and no, I I like watching from the stands you, now. You follow college football as best as anybody I know. Would you can would you be endorsed to move up if it were to come down if it were to come down the pipe or move to FBS? Yeah, yeah, we'll have to see what the top five conferences do. I would, mm -hmm. I you know at some point they're just going to say, hey, NCAA, bye bye. We're going to do it ourselves. Yeah. And then at that point, I think you even mentioned it before right. Mountain West, MAC, all of us are going to have to merge and yeah. find find a middle ground there. Well, you're talking about a lot of budgets. You raise yeah. a lot of money for NDSU. Is it out there? Is the money out there? Yeah, you know, that's it. That's the key. I mean, you got to keep on winning. Yep. I mean, as long as you win, there's going to be money. Hardest question I save for last, green helmets, fan or no? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I think it's a nice change. And again, it goes to those high school kids that like that type of yeah. thing. Hey, NDSU, it, we've got a tradition, but it doesn't mean we can't do a few different things there. And, and that's what I love. I appreciate the time. Thanks for giving us a few hey. minutes and enjoying that's, the game. That's today. a nice hat, too, by the way. Yeah. Chad Stark, NDSU Hall of Famer, giving us a few minutes. We come back, we'll update the injury status. Obviously, I think we know the status of one of the guys and our predictions are still to come. Back live to Frisco on WDAY right after this. Sanford Health medical injury update status. I think we already updated the status of the most important guy in Carson Wentz who's been cleared by the doctors. Should be noted he did it. The injury there, the surgery was done by a doctor at, at Sanford. What you found out, this was not an easy procedure. No, I ran into a retired surgeon uh, yesterday and he said that's one of the trickiest bones to heal yeah. because just uh, for a variety of factors, but one is no blood flow mm. and it takes uh, quite a little delicate surgery to fix that. Biggie, you've documented this over the last couple of weeks. For the first time in three years, this team is remarkably healthy coming into the championship game. Yeah, other than Wentz, we hadn't really had to talk about yeah. too many players throughout the season. Chase Morlock had the ankle, and that's that's over with. And early this season, some offensive line issues, but they've stayed relatively relatively healthy, which is not amazing. But it's not really doesn't happen very much in this day and age. Pretty remarkable. There is one question mark, and that's at the starting place kicker. Chris Kleiman announced on Monday, Cam Peterson, who's missed six of his last seven field goal attempts, will be the starting kicker today. Peterson took over the kicking job in week two. He thrived, connected on eight of 11 field goals. He says he'll be ready if called upon come Saturday. Jeff Colback, I go to you. What do you make of this decision going with a true freshman, one of four going here on Saturday? Well, a couple thoughts come to mind. Number one, the weather I think has gotten worse as yeah. we're sitting here and the wind's picking up. I can't see him putting the hand, putting the, the game in the freshman's so hands. Down, so it comes down to a last if, second if it, kick? If it's fourth and two, say at the 30, I say they go for it. It'll be an interesting decision to see what happens there. We come back. It's the segment everyone's been waiting for. Our predictions. We wrap up live from Frisco right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Final segment of the Media Blog pregame show. Our thanks to our hosts putting us up today, Colt Peck. A new change this year in Frisco. They allow the tailgaters to get here on Friday. A novel idea, something you've been hammering on in, in Fargo for the last five years. Well, I just feel sorry for those guys in Fargo <laughs> lining up at four in the morning and sitting in their cars. Or at seven o'clock at night on Friday nights, what they've been doing over the last couple of years. Let's talk keys to the game here as we get near our hey, prediction. Wait, 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 Don, before we do that. Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Already? Already? The teams have had three weeks to prepare. Yeah. So has the belt. Oh, the belt's out already. The belt then. is out. All right, there it is. It's championship game. Carson Wentz is back. It's time to bring back the belt and put oh, it on course, Dom's shoulder. The belt here, of course. You look a little cold over there. All right, keys to the game, Colpack. What stands out to you? Well, every time NDSU's been here, they've run into a big running back. It was Tim Flanders the first two years yep. for Sam Houston. You had Terrence West for Towson. Then you had Marshawn Copperich. Now you got the Pope kid, who's averaging 8.4 yards a carry. Last four years, the Bison have held the running back down. And that's going to be a big key. How about for you? What stands out for you for keys to the game today? Eli Jenkins. They've had trouble in the past with read option quarterbacks. Yeah. They've shorted up as the season went along. But if Eli Jenkins could do maybe what David Bailey did, you know, early in the season or some of these other read option guys, that could give NDSU some problems. I, I go back to the experience factor, Colpack. That this is NDSU. This is old hat. They know what's going to happen here. The walk through uh, through the the valley of fans for JSU. This is their first time. Do you think there'll be some wide eyes here, or is that overplayed? Well, we'll see. But does it really matter once it's kicked off, though? I, I mean, don't. 
I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I, I maybe maybe not. Well, I'm, I think NDC's see, won. They just been the better team. I, I agree with you. I think they need to probably withstand the first couple minutes of the wall of noise that it's probably going to be in there unless they get a big play in special teams, something well, like that. And they're talking what an 80-20 NDSU pro crowd. It's going to yeah. be the same. It's going to be a fantastic game. 11 a.m. kickoff on ESPN2 uh, that's coming up. All right, time for our prediction segment. Cole Peck has still been roasted over the coals. I will defend him. I don't think you were that wrong going with Northern Iowa. I think you had some you had some validity to it, but who you got here today? Well, I'm, I'm kind of changing my fact. You know, today, this year, all the rage is the alternate helmet. Yes. And of course, we're in Frisco, and it's cowboy country, so I'm going with the alternate <laughs> cowboy hat. It's got you the got stock of Yes, I see that. Just like there. So with this hat, I got to put it on. So I gotta, oh. I gotta pick the this. It's gonna be like last year, Illinois State's game. I'm picking the same score, 29-27. There you go. And he's got the toque and the shock of wheat on the cowboy hat, which has become customary for Colpack. Everyone's waiting to see what you're doing. Now, for those that are new to our show, Big East pulled out penguins, pulled out tractors, belts. Dynasty Mode shirts, what do you have for us this morning? Well, Colpack went to the printer for his prop. <laughs> I went to Holland to get mine. Holland. Oh, look at this. What is that? Uh, official Unix hat worn <laughs> at the New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day dive in Holland. I arrived there on June, uh, January 1st, went to the beach, saw 2,000 people put on these hats and run into the cold water. That said, the bison might have a little water. What's that have today? to do with the game here? Hey, just let me finish, <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> the bison are going to dive into history today, wow. winning a fifth consecutive championship. Woo! It's going to be a close game, maybe some water treading, like I said, 28-24 NDSU, and I finally got a stocking cap. <laughs> I knew they he gets the ovation. That. I've got NDSU winning it as well in a fifth straight championship. Should be a great game, 31 to 23. Thanks to Chad Stark for joining us for E and Jeff Kolpak. I'm Tom Izzo. Thanks for joining us on the Media Block pregame show live from Frisco.